Today, we're going to be taking a look at six different plugins to get you some great ambient sound. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Robert McClellan, and this channel exists to simplify the complexities of the home studio and to help you make professional sounding music in a less than professional space. Now, today's topic on ambient sounds is one of ambiguity. A lot of people believe that ambient sounds only belong in certain genres of music, while others, like myself included, believe that ambient sounds or soundscapes can also be used to create sort of a bed of music for a pre-existing production to set upon. Now, in a lot of the raw track reactions that we've been doing, we've noticed one of the underlying themes of a lot of the music that we've covered is that there are several different tracks within the mix that really doesn't seem like they would contribute to the mix in solo, but when you put them into the mix as a whole, they really start to fill the mix out. And this is where I feel like that ambient sounds or soundscapes can be a great way to fill up those pre-existing sort of sparsely populated productions in order to get them to sound a little bit more full and radio ready. So today we're gonna to be looking at six different plugins that I believe are some excellent choices if you're in the ambient soundscape genre or you're just wanting to create beds of music. Now today with these plugin reviews, I'm gonna be doing something just a little bit different than what I've done in the past. Now in the past, I've usually showcased the plugin, talked about the controls, and then we went through several different sound examples so that you could actually see what that plugin was capable of. Now, while we're still going to do a lot of that, I'm also going to attach something new to it, which is a difficulty level, because I do realize that dialing in some of these plugins sometimes can be rather difficult. So for those of you who may be new to sound design or for those of you who are very well experienced, it's going to help you to sort of dial in which plugin might be the best for you so that you don't have to go out and buy all of them. However, if you'd like to buy all of them, there's links in the description. All right, up first is Cryostasis. This is by JMG Sound, and the current price point on this is $19 in the US. I'm gonna give this one a difficulty level of two. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the controls first, sort of explain what they're doing, and then we'll hear some sound examples. Cryostasis is a spectral inertia effect that can progressively smear your audio until infinitely frozen in time. It features spectral effects and controls to shape the character of the frozen tail as well. The audio is controlled by a continuously variable freeze knob or an auto switch that can be timed in milliseconds or musical measures by double clicking. As far as controls are concerned, this middle portion right here is your freeze options. This controls the amount of signal that's going to be frozen. And as you increase this middle knob here, you're also going to be increasing the amount of smeared audio until at the maximum set point, it becomes completely frozen forever. In addition, the freeze control will also scale the amount of the wash, pitch, filter, and reduce effects. This small switch right here turns the freeze control on or off from zero to 100% and back. This can be great for automation. And the small time control dialog box here controls the length of time for the switch to turn off or on. This size knob here controls the time length for the spectral window. It changes the character of the freeze effect as well with smaller values giving an unnatural robot-like sound and large values sounding smooth and blurry. Next, the wash control controls the amount of reverb to diffuse and smoothen the freeze effect itself. Just below that in this bottom section is pitch, filter, lo-fi, and shift. The pitch shift knob controls the depth of the pitch shift scaled by the freeze control with a range from negative 24 to plus 24 semitones. You can double click this control as well to enter specific values. Next is the filter knob. This controls the depth of high and low pass filtering depth scaled by the freeze control. Turn left for low pass down to 200 hertz and right for high pass up to 2000 kilohertz. Likewise, you can double click this one as well for specific values. Next is the lo-fi knob, and this one controls the amount of bit and rate reduction scaled by the freeze control. Turn left for a rate reduction and to the right for bit reduction. And lastly is the shift knob. This controls the amount of frequency shifting scaled by the freeze control with a range of negative one kilohertz to plus one kilohertz. Oh, and one last thing, this also does have a limiter, which allows you to enable a safety limiter on the plugin's output. All right, let's pull up the cryostasis here and begin to listen to what it can do to this affected audio. We're gonna start out with some guitar. Of course, I'm a guitarist, why not? <laughs> okay, so this is the dry signal. Thank you. 
That's pretty stinking cool. So as you can see, there's a lot that you can do with this plugin. Okay, let's take a look at the cryostasis on a male lead vocal, just to kind of see what we can come up with here. This is typically not where you would want to use it, but you never know. Tell me, babe, you want to leave this town? I'm saying, love it if you want to go, I'm down. Cause darling, we were made for bigger things. That actually sounds really this good. This place keeps killing our dreams. Let's go, love. I'm saying, ain't you tired of waiting? We can leave this whole place behind. Let's go, love. I'm saying, I'm waiting. We can leave this whole place. So I could definitely see this being used on a parallel processing type track where you have like a secondary vocal track that's being fed into the first and using this to sort of accentuate those end elements or to create space where maybe there wasn't space in a sparsely populated mix. This can be really cool. Next up is the Expanse 3D by JMG Sound. This one is going for $49 US and I'm going to give this one a difficulty level of one. Expanse 3D is a psychoacoustic processor that expands and enhances your audio in three different dimensions. It takes advantage of how our brains perceive a sound space and size. It achieves this by using a combination of analog type saturation, spectral phase offsetting, resynthesis, intricate delay networks, and a whole lot more under the hood. Now all these processors are applied to the appropriate frequency ranges using high quality filters. Now here's the cool thing, the filters themselves cause zero phase shift, which makes this appropriate for mastering and also does not have latency. Now, Expanse 3D can also be used for mixing and sound design as well. It can help glue sounds together and create contrast and definition between sounds in a mix. Let's take a look at some of the main controls. You have an in and out control, which basically just controls the input gain with a range of negative 24 dBs to plus 24 dBs. And the output controls the output gain. The first knob we'll take a look at is the width knob. The width knob creates super width while remaining natural and transparent. And the wonderful thing about this is it keeps the bass tight, reduces stereo from the sub, and gets progressively wider to the high end. In other words, it's fully mono compatible, preserves position focus, and can generate stereo from mono. When at 100%, you'll have a very wide treble, a wide mid, and an unaffected bass and mono sub. There will also be a mild saturation of the stereo content. Likewise, you can click on the box here to bring up different modes. Now, essentially, there's only two different algorithms that you're working from, the normal and the alternate. And they both work very much the same, but have offsets at different frequency points. Now, each of these modes has a normal and inverted version. This can be useful if you want to group elements in a mix, for example, a group of vocals, as this would allow them to all share the same mode. However, more commonly, you'll have the elements that you wish to separate, for example, guitar and piano. For this, you can use the different modes so that they will not share the same frequency offsets. 
Next up is the depth knob, which uses a psychoacoustic effect to give the perception of additional depth without pushing the sound back in the mix. It generates multiple small delays, which are too short for the brain to identify as separate in combination with transient processing, and modifies phase and channels in such a way that creates a deeper sound. Now this effect operates mainly in the mid frequencies. It can be used in great effect in mastering where it can glue a mix together as all the elements share a common space. However, it can also be used in mixing to separate sounds, creating contrast between deep and shallow elements. This one also has a mode selection, tight, normal, and deep. The normal mode is the default and will work best for a majority of sounds, whereas tight uses shorter delays and is better for percussive sounds such as drums, where deep uses larger delays to give a very deep effect and can be used on sounds with a soft attack such as pads. And the last knob is the height knob. Now it is a commonly recognized phenomenon that we perceive low frequency sounds as coming from below or high frequency sounds as coming from above. Now this plugin exploits this by extending the lowest and highest frequencies of the audio to make it sound even bigger. The high frequencies are treated with some very analog sounding saturation with plenty of even harmonics, dynamic consistency, and an anti-aliasing algorithm. Unlike a traditional EQ that would simply boost existing frequencies, this generates additional upper harmonics extending the range of the treble. Now, the low frequencies are resynthesized, improving the clarity and adding upper harmonics. This process takes advantage of the missing fundamental trick, which allows you to improve the perception of low frequencies on speakers that are less able to produce them. And for speakers that can, you get a more powerful and stable low end. And just like the previous knobs we looked at, this one also has different modes a normal, extended low, extended high, and extended low high. Now, if your audio does not have much low or high frequency content, then the height parameter might have little effect. Now, to combat this, you can extend the range of the processor with these modes. For audio with little bass, you can choose extended low. For audio with little treble, try extended high. And for audio with little bass and treble, you can use extended low and high. For the most part, however, the normal mode will be the right choice, especially for full mixes. Okay, let's hear the Expanse 3D on this guitar here. See if we can make it sound even bigger. And uh, we'll go ahead and start just messing around with some knobs. I got it all turned down to nominal. <laughs> Okay, let's listen to it on these synth style keys and see what we can come up with here. I'm going to turn this down because these are a little bit hot. Well, these already sound very wide as they are.
Okay, B4. And after. Before. After. So on this one here, it doesn't really sound like it made it wider. It just sounds like it made it different, which could be good for if you're wanting to create sort of carve out a space for something. I did notice there was a little bit of clipping going on here within the plugin. And that's the beautiful thing about having this out slider, because I noticed as I increased the width, it also increased the volume, uh, obviously because of what it's trying to do within its algorithms. Okay, now let's try it here on some male vocals. See what we can come up with on here. Turn all this down again. Tell me, babe, you wanna leave this town? I'm mm. saying, love her if you wanna go on down. Cause darling, we were made for bigger things. And this place keeps killing our dreams. And the school I'm saying, ain't you tired? Without? I've been waiting, we can leave With. this whole place behind. Tell me, babe, you want to leave this town? I'm saying, love it if you want to go on down. That sounds really cool on vocals. That could be something where it just makes it sound more intimate, like you're in the room with them. Very cool. I like it. The next plugin we'll be looking at is Hyperspace by JMG Sound as well. Now, this one is currently going for $65 US. And I'm going to give this one a difficulty level of four. Hyperspace is an algorithmic reverb allowing the users to create algorithms made up of various processors. Vintage, classic, retro, modern, sci-fi, and cosmic modes will let you combine various algorithms with endless possibilities. Let's check out some of the controls so that you'll see how Hyperspace can enrich your tracks with a myriad of colors. The top section here is what we're going to call the global section. This controls everything on the plugin globally. The wet dry controls over here control the level of processed or unprocessed signal. The small button in the middle is a link control, which makes the wet control the dry so that they both equal 100%. This is how most plugins work. However, here you can use the two controls unlinked to get 50 wet and 100% dry, for example. The next section over here is the in and out section. In is the first stage in the signal chain and controls the input level for everything else. Out is the last stage in the signal chain and controls the output level for everything as a whole. You'll notice that there's also a link button included on this one as well, which can be useful to boost the input and then compensate with the output so that there's no additional overall volume. The center section here is your preset box. You can use the backwards or the forwards arrow controls to move between various different presets. Clicking the box also opens the preset browser where you can save, load, and name different presets. And just to the right of that, we have several different options as well, such as copy, which allows you to take the settings from the currently selected A or B slot and copies them into another slot. The A and B switches between two states of the plugin. This can be used to make better decisions based off of directly comparing the before and the after, and the bypass obviously disables the plugin's processing. Lastly, this exclamation point is a panic button, which resets the plugin's processors. Right next to that is a lock feature, which protects all the settings in the toolbar from changing when loading presets. This is useful, for example, if you want to keep the wet at 100%, but the preset has it set to 50%. And then we have this glorious undo and redo feature. Now this will revert back one step to help avoid the accidental change of perimeter values. And then like most JMG plugins, there are the dice. These are intelligent randomizers that generate settings in the plugin. One randomizes the XY pads, therefore only changing the sound character of the reverb without changing the main controls. Three will randomize the most common settings associated with the reverb. And I have to say, it generates sensible values, nothing too over the top. It's good when you want to just quickly hear what a different reverb setup will sound like so that you can see if it works well for your incoming audio signal. Now five, however, generates full random chaos. This can often sound very creative. So this pink section right here, this is literally the heart of hyperspace and it controls the sound character of the reverb. Most algorithmic reverbs on the market come with just one algorithm with presets based off of that. Hyperspace, however, lets you custom build your own algorithms in an extremely easy to use and intuitive way. 
from vintage plates or classic hardware to super realistic spaces or even out of this world ethereal textures, hyperspace is an extremely flexible reverb. At the top of these pink boxes is a mode section, which when clicked on will allow you to choose from various different modes, vintage, classic, retro, modern, sci-fi, and cosmic. Each of these modes loads two structures and their value sets into the algorithm's XY pad. Now, speaking of the XY pad, the one on the left is the algorithm's XY pad. This controls the structures and values of the algorithm itself. The X axis cross fades between structures, while the Y axis interpolates between many sets of machine learned internal values. To the right of that is the character XY pad. This XY pad controls the sound character of the algorithm. The X axis skews all the delay times in the algorithm and the Y axis morphs frequency ranges and internal routings for the algorithm. On the left here, we have this blue section, which contains the main perimeters to create your virtual space. Therefore, these are the most important controls to create a great sounding reverb. Your time controls the RT60 measured in milliseconds, and it's also the amount of time that it takes for the reverb level to drop by 60 dBs. Therefore, it controls the length of the reverb tail. The size obviously controls the virtual size of the room. Damp controls the amount of dampening. Density controls the complexity of the algorithm. Typically, higher values are fuller and richer and the early and late controls the balance between early and late reflections. Likewise, you have a section here that's labeled par slash SER. This controls the balance between parallel and serial routing of the early and late reflections. Parallel means that both the early and late reflection generators will listen to the input, while serial means that the late reflections generator will listen to the early reflections generator. This creates resonances and diffusion. And then, of course, you have your pre-delay, your filter, modulation, tilt, distance, and width. Now, over here on the right, we have this orange section, which contains four special effects used for creative spaces. Multiply creates many delayed copies of the early reflections, each with feedback. The XY pads will change the delay times and feedback levels and pan positions, therefore changing the sound character of the effect itself. Space controls the amount of time between each copy, stretching or shortening the length of the effect, while Resonate is a series of comb filters that creates a metallic sounding resonance to the reverb itself. Form modifies the distribution of the delays, which sounds like it changes the shape of the resonating object. Shimmer is a pitch shifter that is inside the reverb's feedback network, and pitch controls the frequency of the shifter in semitones. Inertia is a special processor that freezes the reverb into an almost infinite state. This is great for creating huge drone effects, soundscapes, and textures. While tone controls the dampening of this effect, which is useful to make the tail get increasingly darker or brighter. Okay, lastly, we have this green section here, which contains a group of processors designed to help the reverb fit better in a mix. Reverb can often sound great, and it's tempting to use a lot of it. However, this can often wash out sounds, and they can get pushed back into the mix and lose clarity and focus. Now, these tools typically reduce the amount of reverb for a certain element of the sound and then compensate for that reduction with an equal or opposite increase of the other elements. This focus dial uses spectral processing to separate the noisy and tonal elements of the signal. Negative values will reduce the amount of reverb for tone and increase for noise. This can be used to bring focus to the musical instruments of the audio while still keeping a good amount of reverb in the less important noise component. Follow uses two advanced level followers and compares the results. Negative values will reduce the level of the reverb when the dry signal is present, and this can be used to subtly help the sound not get drowned out with reverb and brings it forward in the mix. The next knob is labeled as transient. This knob separates the transient and the tail components. Negative values will reduce the level of the reverb for the transient, allowing it to cut through the mix while still retaining a good amount of reverb tail. And positive values will reduce the level of the reverb for the tail and increase the reverb for the transient. This creates a percussive reverb, which usually has more tonal content. And lastly is a dynamics knob. This is a pre-reverb dynamics processor. Negative values will reduce the dynamic range of the reverb. Now this can be great because having too much dynamics in the reverb tail can sometimes clutter up a busy mix. So this is useful to make the tail more consistent. All right, next up, we're gonna take a look at the hyperspace plugin. Now remember, this is one of the hardest plugins that we have on the list as far as controls, but I guarantee you with just a little bit of tweaking, we're gonna find something awesome. And of course, that's what presets are for, to get you in the ballpark quicker. So let's take a listen. This is dry. And I've just loaded up something called Asteroid Field. I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna try it out. So here we go.
Okay, so clearly for some of these, you've got pitch settings, which means... Okay, clearly for some of these, you have pitch settings, which means that you're obviously going to have to adjust the algorithm to meet the demands of whatever pitch that you're in. This is in, I believe it's E minor, so the pitch setting being set to negative two didn't really help in that instance. Um, but at the same time, I feel like, you know, as long as you're mindful of at least a little bit of music theory, you're going to know exactly what you're doing. It's going to sound great. Um, let's try this on these synth or electric keys here. Okay, so I chose Real Space's Bright Stadium. Now let's add some shimmer to it. Okay, I'm going to adjust the pitch by five. That should hopefully give us a, a fifth harmonic. your volume levels going into this. Oh, that's very cool. There's definitely a lot of things you could do with this. I think it's the possibilities are endless. Um, and of course you could play around with this for days. And then whenever you find something that you really like, of course you can save that as a preset. So that's the beautiful thing about it. Um, just real quickly though, let's roll the dice and see what comes up and then we'll move on to our next plugin. cool definitely like it up next is mirror mirror by jmg sound is coming in at 34 dollars us and i'm going to give this one a difficulty level of two now mirror is truly a unique plugin imagine a plugin that sees into the future it then reverses your audio applies effects and plays it back before the event even begins now this is one of those plugins that would automatically create that much loved reverse reverb and snare effect in seconds this is what the jmg mirror plugin is literally doing it's the world's first reverse negative delay i really love the fact too that this plugin is very straightforward with just a simple wet dry trim verb and blur i'll describe a little bit more about what these do but as you can see it's very simplistic the trim controls in milliseconds how much of the end of the reverse audio will be trimmed off now this is useful to remove a harsh transient to soften the effect the verb controls the dry wet mix of a reversed reverb. Blur on the other hand controls the dry wet mix of a short reverb. This diffuses the audio and is useful to soften any transient that may be too dynamic for the reversed effect. Likewise down here you have high and low pass filters which are very helpful and a negative button. This switch allows you to turn off and on negative delay that uses latency compensation to play the wet audio before the dry. When this is off, there is no latency and the wet audio will play after the dry. Now in this way, mirror functions as a standard reverse delay synced to the host tempo and will not be subject to any dull latency limitations. And then of course you have your presets dialog box, which loads up your presets, allows you to save your own. And you have a time section here in the middle, which will allow you to go from one eighth, one and a quarter, one half and one. Let's go ahead and check this out on the guitar first and then we'll move on to some other things. Um, but of course, as a guitarist, I'm going to be a little bit slighted. <laughs> Let's check it. Oh, 
That is cool. So cool. Okay, I don't know how good this is going to sound, but I'm kind of curious as to how this is going to sound on a lead vocal. Let's go ahead and check it out. Tell me, babe, I'm gonna leave this town. Just saying, babe, if you want to go on down, it's gonna make a big thing. And this place keeps giving my dream. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's pretty cool. Tell me, babe, you wanna leave this town? I'm saying, love it if you wanna go on down. It's darling, we were made for bigger things. And this place keeps killing our dreams. And let's go, love. I'm saying, ain't you tired? Okay. I'm waiting. Yeah, that could definitely be used in a lot of creative ways there. Not my favorite on vocals, but it definitely has its place. Okay, now let's see if we can recreate that reverse reverb snare trick that was really popular in the 80s and uh, just how quick we can get it there. Oh, wow. Okay, wow. So it was super quick to dial that in, and it was done very seamlessly just simply because it actually had a preset in there. Reverse reverb preset, reverse snare preset, reverse snare halftime. Made it so, so simple. So if you want that effect, no longer do you have to jump through two or three different hoops to get it. You can just simply use this one plugin. Next up is the Orbitron by JMG Sound. This plugin is currently going for $65 US, and I'm going to give this one a difficulty level of three. The Orbitron works upon this premise. Simple modulation can be boring and tedious. However, with Orbitron, it doesn't have to be. Imagine that you could fluently crossfade between four various modulation effects so that each bar would sound completely different or blend the four effects together to create something completely unique. That's the approach that only Orbitron can offer. Now, taking a look at these controls, you're gonna notice that they look very similar, and all of them honestly react in the same way that they would have on the previous plugin that we just covered. So I won't be covering a lot in this section here. Now, the central section, however, is the brains of the plugin, and it contains controls for blending between the four different effects. The main large circle in the middle displays a spinning dot to show the mixed position of the effects. Likewise, it can be set to one of four modes by clicking this area here. Sync, Free, Random, and Manual. The Sync option will spin in time with your DAW at a set number of bars. Free will spin at a constant non-synced speed, and Random will modulate the mix position with smooth random movement, while Manual will be a static mix of the four effects. And here you can drag the dot to find the perfect sweet spot that you'd like. Now, just above that, you're gonna see a range slider. This controls the depths of the mix modulation. The higher the value, the more audible difference there will be when passing by each quadrant. The Bars section selects the sync speed for the mix modulation measured in bars. A value of four means it takes four bars for the dot to make a complete circle. 
The feed knob down here controls the amount of circular feedback. This unique circular feedback system feeds the signal from the previous effects into the input of the next effects round and round again, and the size controls the delay sizes for the feedback loops. By clicking on either one of the four boxes found at the top of each one of these, you're going to find that there are different modes, Cosmic Chorus, Vintage Chorus, Super Chorus, and so on. You can set all these to the same or to different so that you can get a completely different effect. Now, having all of these different modes at your fingertips allows you for a great amount of creativity. And I would not have time in one video to cover what all of the modes do. So I would urge you to just use your ears and make the determining factor on which one sounds best or which combination of them all sound best together. Likewise, you can always click the solo button to hear what each mode is contributing to all the modes as a whole. We're going to begin with these same male lead vocals, uh, just to kind of see what it's doing to these here. Tell me, babe, you want to leave this town? I'm saying, love her if you want to go on down. Cause darling, we were made for bigger things. And this place keeps killing our dreams. And let's go, love. I'm saying, ain't you tired? I've been waiting, we can leave this whole place behind. Yeah. Very cool. Let's go, love. I'm saying, ain't you tired? I've been waiting, we can leave this whole place behind. Tell me, babe, you wanna leave this town? I'm saying, love it if you wanna go, I'm down. Cause darling, we will make the bigger thing. And this place keeps killing our dream. Very cool for creating movement, especially in something like this. Um, don't know if I would necessarily always use it on vocals, but it'd be great as an effect. I really think the guitar is where it's going to shine, so let's go ahead and listen to it on the guitar. Okay, so it definitely has a lot of movement. Man, it would be great for something like this uh, to really get it to sort of inhabit that left and right stereo field to get it to really jump out of the speakers. I loved what it's doing. Um, it has a lot, a lot of uses, a lot of which there's no way we could even cover on this one demo, um, but definitely something worth putting into your arsenal. Last up on the list is the Strymon Big Sky Reverb. This is currently going for $199 US, and I'm gonna give this one a difficulty level of two. Now, one of the most coveted guitar pedals for ambient sounds, and a pedal that inhabits nearly every pedal board in a church setting, is the Big Sky Reverb. 
and it's now available as a plugin. And because it's a plugin, you can now add the Strymon Big Sky to your track and instantly lift your sound into the stratosphere. From vast, immersive, nearly infinite decays to responsive plates perfectly tuned to organically accentuate vocal performances, Big Sky offers the pinnacle of premium reverb sounds with unparalleled depth and spaciousness. Okay, let's cover some of the controls. However, because there is a lot to cover in this particular plugin, I'm going to minimize it to basically just the basics. So you have an input and an output. You have your presets dialog box here where you can load up either factory presets or user presets. You can also save whatever presets you might have on your screen, bypass the plugin from here, and here's another really cool feature. You can even turn off the values for the knobs themselves. All right, let's look at some of the basic controls. DK controls the time that it takes for the reverb level to drop to zero. Your pre-delays, that's the time between the dry source signal and the onset of reverb from zero to 1.5 seconds. Next is the tone knob, which adjusts the high-end content of the reverb. Lower settings create darker, warmer reverberation, whereas higher settings are bright and crisp. The mod knob adds modulation to the reverberated signal. Lower settings modulate the decay lines slightly for a subtle and natural movement, while higher settings tastefully add stronger modulation. The low end knob affects the low frequency content and DK profile. And the mix knob controls the balance of your dry original input source and wet reverberated signals from 100% dry at minimum to 100% wet at maximum. A 50-50 mix occurs when the knob is set to the three o'clock position, as shown here. You can also click the lock icon at the lower right of the control, which prevents the mix setting from being changed when a new preset is called. This is most useful when using Big Sky as a send effect when its output would normally be 100% wet. Just below that, you have an infinite and a freeze mode. This sets the mode of operation for the hold switch found here. You can select infinite to set as infinite sustain, allowing your reverbs to continue infinitely with each new note that you play adding to the reverb signal. Or you can select freeze to set as reverb freeze, delivering infinite sustain and allowing for new notes on top of the sustain without adding to the reverb. And you can press the hold button to hold the current audio input to the reverb. Over here on the left, you have 12 different reverb machines from the Big Sky pedal that have all been integrated into this plugin. Each reverb type has its own sound and character along with its own set of additional parameters to dial in to your desired sound. Now the beautiful thing about the Big Sky plugin is that whenever you switch back and forth between one mode to another, it retains the settings that you had on the last mode setting. This can be really great for auditioning different types of reverb effects on any given signal. The first one we'll look at is Cloud. It's a big, gorgeous, ambient reverb that draws from techniques developed in the late 70s. However, using processing power that was never even dreamed of in those days, the Cloud reverb machine obscures the distinction between reality and fantasy. As you can see, this adds diffusers in front of and within the reverb generator. When this is set to minimum, that means that there is no diffusion, and the Cloud effect is grainy yet mesmerizing on transient attacks. As diffusion is increased, the reverb is smooth and softened. Next up, you have the Corral, which sounds like a vocal choir accompanying your music. You can choose vowel ranges and intensities to customize your choir as it sings in venues that vary from size with the decay knob. As mod is increased, the choir comes alive with a multitude of voices. The additional parameters provided here are resonance, which allows you to adjust the intensity of the vowel sound by adjusting the vocal filter resonance. Mild allows for subtle vocal qualities, while medium is for an increased vocal intensity, and the high setting produces the most resonant vowel sounds and can be a bit spooky late at night. And just to the right of that, you can select your vowel sounds from here. Next up, one of my favorites is the shimmer mode. This is two tunable voices that add pitch shifted tones to the reverberated signal for resplendent and earthy ambiences. The voices are carefully created from the reverberated signal itself to generate maximum radiance and beauty. The amount and mode parameters work together to vary the intensity of the shimmer effect, creating a range of effects from laid back and subtle to full-blown majestic splendor. Shift 1 selects the first voice interval from one octave down to two octaves up, and Shift 2 selects the second voice interval from one octave down to two octaves up as well. It can also be set to off if no second voice is desired at all, and your amount adjusts the level of the shifted voices in the reverberated signal. The next up is Magneto. Now, a new style of music emerged in the late 50s, featuring the guitar as the lead voice, enhanced by the reverberated wash of the multi-head tape echo. The Magneto machine sets up a multi-headed echo with all heads on an adjustable feedback level. 
The diffusion parameter adds a new dimension of ambience, smearing the response of the heads and blurring the line between delay and reverb. Now on this one here, you have delay time, which sets the delay time of the last head. You have your feedback, which adds feedback from the last head back to the input when even spacing is selected. With uneven spacing, the feedback is taken from the last two heads. Then you have wow and flutter, which simulates the effects of tape speed variation from mechanical imperfections, adding hypnotic movement and fullness to the sound. And then of course you have your low end and mix settings again. Now diffusion controls the effect of diffusers on the magnetic heads. At minimum, there's no diffusion effect. As the diffusion parameters turned up, the heads are increasingly smeared, creating a reverberated quality to the repeats. You can also select from three, four, or six playback heads, and you can adjust your spacing from here. Even spacing puts the heads at the same distance one from another for equal delay times, and uneven spacing scatters the heads, creating a more complex, less overly rhythmic effect. The next mode is a non-linear reverb, which offers a variety of physics-defying reverb decay shapes for special effects and unique textures. The feedback, late reverb level, and diffusion parameters allow for a vast array of time warped possibilities. In nonlinear mode, two of the common parameters assume different controls than the other reverb machines. For instance, time sets the time of the nonlinear portion of the reverb, whereas feedback adds feedback from the nonlinear portion of the reverb back into the input. And then, of course, you have your shapes. This knob adjusts the shape of the nonlinear generator. Swoosh, reverse, and ramp all create backwards effects with different slope profiles, whereas gate generates an even amplitude profile with an abrupt cutoff, gauss creates a bell curve profile, and bounce creates an anti-bell shape. And much like the other controls, you have diffusion, decay, your level, and mod speed which adjusts the modulation LFO speeds for both the nonlinear delay tap links and the late reverb delay lines. Next up is the reflections. Now, the reflections type is a psychoacoustically accurate small space reverb that allows you to move the source anywhere in the room layout. The reflections algorithm precisely calculates 250 reflections based on the source position within the chosen room shape. The psychoacoustic modifiers then adjust for human auditory perception to create an unparalleled realism in the ambience that it adds to the dry instrument or vocal track. In reflections, three of the common parameters assume different controls than the other reverb machines. For instance, room size adjusts the apparent size of the room from 100 square feet to 1,000 square feet. As room size increases, decay time increases accordingly. On this mode, lower damping settings create a darker tone, which would come about from carpeting, drapes, and other absorptive materials on reflecting surfaces. Higher damping settings create a brighter tone, with the sound of stone or tiled walls with fewer absorbing materials in the room. And the pre-delay mod adds modulation to the pre-delay time to create a randomized chorus effect against the dry signal. You'll notice also that you have an X and Y. X sets the left and right position of the source in the room, while Y sets the front and back position of the source in the room. And speaking of rooms, we have the room mode as well. This is a versatile room algorithm that creates environments ranging from a well-tuned studio ambience to large nightclub acoustics. The tone, diffusion, and low-end parameters adjust the damping and scattering effects of materials, furniture, and even people in the room. Next up is the hall mode. In this mode, diffused reflections and slow building density are the hallmarks of this beautiful and versatile reverb. The concert size is well-balanced, spacious, and warm, while the arena size is huge, enveloping, and booming. The mid-EQ perimeter enables precise EQ tailoring of the reverberated sound as well. The next mode we're going to talk about is the plate mode. Now, this plate is a rich, fast-building reverb that creates depth without the early reflection cues to a specific environment. The tone and the low-end parameters are simple but powerful frequency shaping tools used on this mode. You can also select from two different plate sizes. The small plate is representative of a home project plate, and the large plate is a traditional studio plate. The next mode we'll talk about is the spring mode. The spring reverb tank became a staple of surf and spaghetti western music that developed in the 60s. The spring reverb mode allows for complete customization from warm and mellow to splashy and dripping with its tone and mix controls, dwell parameter, and selectable number of springs. The dwell parameter allows you to adjust the amount of drive in the spring tank preamp circuit. Select clean for the cleanest spring tones, whereas the combo setting adds more gain as was typical in combo amps with onboard spring reverb. The tube selection increases the gain further and increases the harmonic components entering the spring tank, 
like turning up the dwell control in an outboard spring reverb unit. Lastly, the overdrive setting maximizes the preamp gain for maximum trashiness. Another great mode that's found within the Big Sky plugin is the swell mode. Now, swell brings in reverb gradually behind the dry signal for subtle evolving textures, like having a volume pedal on the wet signal. Alternatively, you can choose to have the dry signal swell into the reverb as well for maximum ambience and atmosphere. On the rise time parameter, this adjusts the rise time of the swelled signal. Choose shorter times for single line soloing or longer times for ambient chord work. And the swell mode selects the configuration of the swell machine. The wet option swells in the wet signal behind your dry signal for a subtle evolving reverb, whereas the dry option swells the dry signal in front of the reverb for awesome ambience and swelled solos. And lastly, we have the bloom mode. In the 90s, more diffusion blocks were added to reverbs to smooth out the sound. A side effect of this was the tendency of these reverbs to have a slowly building envelope that bloomed, resulting in big ambient reverbs that sit nicely with the dry signal, even at high mix levels. The bloom reverb mode features a bloom generating section that feeds into a traditional reverb and adds a unique feedback parameter that expands the possibilities exponentially. On this particular mode, you only have two additional parameters, length and feedback. Length adjusts the length of the bloom portion of the reverb. Higher levels result in longer bloom times. And feedback adjusts the amount of feedback applied around the bloom portion of the reverb. Okay, and I've possibly saved one of my favorites for the last because I just know I've, I've always wanted this guitar pedal. I've never actually had the money to purchase one or own one. I've played with them, though, and I know that these are awesome. I'm just curious as to how good the, the plug-in is going to sound as well. So I'm going to obviously start this off right off the bat with the electric guitar. Let's see what we can dial in. That's very cool. Thank you. 
that sounds really natural. Okay, so obviously with a guitar, there's a whole host of things that you can do with it. Absolutely amazing. But one thing that I really think this is going to shine on to is a lead vocal. Let's go ahead and listen to that on a lead vocal and see what we can come up with there. Now, a lot of times it's hard to dial in a good plate sound with some reverb plugins, but I think this one is probably going to be great right out of the gate. Let's just listen. Tell me, babe, you want to leave this town? I'm saying, love it if you want to go, I'm down. Cause darling, we were made for bigger things. And this place keeps killing our dreams. And That's spot on right out of the gate. I'm saying, ain't you tired of waiting? We can leave this whole place behind. You tell me, babe, you want to leave this town? I'm saying, Love it if you want to go, I'm down Cause darling, we were made for bigger things And this place keeps killing our dreams And let's go, love I'm saying, ain't you tired of waiting We can leave this whole place behind And let's go, love I'm saying, ain't you tired Waiting, we can leave this whole place behind. Definitely some cool options there as well. Um, I think this plugin is one of those that's just probably going to shine on anything you put it on. It just depends on how you dial in the settings. Okay, lastly, let's hear it on some keys. I'm going to start with the room reverb and we're just going to move it around. Now, what I said earlier about the settings though. If I dial this in to 100%, 127 tone, and I come back to the hall, when I go back to plate, it's still set up that way. Very cool. So let's start with a room setting, and then we'll go from there. Hall. Oh, that's gorgeous. sound design beautiful I am thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with not only the sound, but the versatility of this plugin. Well, everyone, I hope that the brief reviews of these plugins was enlightening or entertaining at the least. And I hope that you found out something new maybe about these plugins that you hadn't known before. Now, there would be no way in our right mind that we could actually spend all the time needed to go over all of these plugins. So you're only getting a glimpse into what they're actually capable of. But if you'd like to try them out, every one of these plugins have a free downloadable trial version that's completely 100% free. There's no limitations to it. Most of them for seven days and some of them for even longer. So go ahead and check them out. All of the links will be provided in the description. If you like this kind of content, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe while you're here. Remember, we can dream alone. We can even create alone. But together, we can achieve so much more.